And we are live here from Larry Knight Field in Summerall, Mississippi, as the Summerall Bobcats are set to face the Purvis Tornadoes for a second time this week. The Purvis Tornadoes won a thriller of a matchup on Wednesday night. But tonight, the Bobcats need a win by at least three runs to secure their place as the district champs. Purvis in the driver's seat of this district, and this is a big matchup here tonight. So for your Bobcats, uh, pitching on the mound for the Bobcats, Mr. Jack Miller. Jack Miller, 2-1 on the season with a 2.16 ERA. 2.2 or 22.2 innings pitched, 20 strikeouts and 10 walks. Defensively, the Bobcats line up Hawkins at third base, Davis at short, Garcia at second, Odom at first, Moss behind the plate, and then you have McNair in left. Williamson in center, and Clinton in right. And for your Purvis Tornadoes, um, what a very good lineup they have. And you got to see a little glimpse of it on Wednesday night, leading off for the Purvis Tornadoes, JoJo Parker. JoJo Parker comes into this game hitting 520 on the year. So a threat to this Bobcat defense. And you can see Landon Hawkins playing all the way in the six hole, excuse me, the four hole. Oh, and JoJo Parker lifts this one up to right field and Clinton makes the grab on the wall. What looked like a Sunday pop-up almost carried out of here off the bat of Parker. But that gives the Bobcats their first out of the inning. And it doesn't get any easier from there. Now hitting for the Purvis Tornadoes, Jacob Parker, the center fielder for this Tornado squad. He comes into the game hitting 492. So these twins carry a lot of weight in this Tornado lineup. Jack, Jack Miller starts him off with a big swing and a miss. And the 01. And that one gets in on the hands of Parker. And it couldn't have been an easier play over there for Garcia for out number two. So Garcia doesn't even move on the line drive. And there are two outs here in the top of the first inning. And now hitting for the Pur Purvis Tornadoes, the first baseman, Drew Swan. Drew Swan comes into the game hitting 339 on the season. Had a big, big game for the Tornadoes. On Wednesday night, but Miller starts him off with a breaking ball for a strike. The one pitch misses low for ball one. A beautiful day here in Summerall, Mississippi, and it is packed. Wednesday night kind of kind of had a weaker crowd just. Due to uh, due to church and and all the great activities there are to do on Wednesday night, but it is electric in here tonight. The grills are fired up in right field, and we are playing Bobcat baseball. And he just fights that one off. But in, and Swan's going to step back up into the box with a one-two count. So Miller working quick on the mound for the Bobcats. And the one-two pitch. And he hits this one off the cap. Garcia is going to make a run for it, but he is unable to grab it. So a two-out single for the Purvis Tornadoes. And they get their first runner aboard in this game. And now stepping into the box for the Tornadoes, their DH, Hudson Walker. Swan stands at first with two outs here in Summerall. And a big swing and a miss there by Hudson. And if you weren't here to watch on Wednesday night, it was a story of timely hitting 
for both of these squads. And, and Purvis, I would said it earlier, it was whatever team gets to bat last pretty much. And Purvis was that team. And they took advantage of the seventh inning as they scored two runs to win that game in the bottom of the seventh. But Jack Miller has Hudson here with a no-two count. And let us know where you're watching today. Shoot me a text at 601-408-0292. So a no-two count. Probably not going to give him anything good here. But he fights it off. A good pitch there by, by, by Miller. So another unexpected start for the Bobcats. Jack Miller, not their number one or number two pitchers on the season. And Davis misses the throwdown from Most. He had him hosed at second. But Davis unable to handle it. And so Swan swipes the bag here with two outs. And now Hudson... As a runner in scoring position. Jack Miller on the mound. And the pitch. And that one gets on the hands of him. But it's going to make Williamson run for it. And he gets it out in center field. So a great play by Williamson. And that is out number three. So the Bobcats head to the dugout. No runs, one hit, no errors. One man left on. Zero to zero as we head into the bottom half of the first inning. This is Zane Berry, and you are listening to Bobcat Baseball. So we are back live here in Summerall as the Bobcats get ready to pick up the bats and hopefully swing them. The Bobcat lineup tonight, it's a little different than normal. Uh, batting first, the center fielder, Caden Williamson, batting second, the first baseman, Leo Odom, batting third, the third baseman, Landon Hawkins, batting fourth, the right fielder, Cade Clinton, batting fifth, the pitcher, Jack Miller, batting sixth, the shortstop, Drew Davis, batting seventh. The second baseman, Garcia, batting eighth. The catcher, S.T. Moss, and batting ninth, the left fielder, Malik McNair. Eli Lowe on the mound 
for the Tornadoes. Eli Lowe comes into this game with a 3.55 ERA. 25 innings pitch, 22 strikeouts, and 15 walks on the season. And just a season ago, Purvis punched their ticket to the state championship right here on this field. And Eli Lowe was that pitcher, so a, a uh, comeback, just trying to bounce back from that and get a bitter sweet, sweet taste out of their mouth is summer all today. Caden Williamson down to a 1-2 count. Williamson has, a done, has done a fantastic job out of the leadoff spot. He is hitting 312 on the year and is really, really taking in his role out of the leadoff spot. So the one-two pitch, that one fouled back into the net. So Williamson staying alive for this Bobcat offense. So a one-two count, and Eli Lowe working quick. But he misses low on the breaking ball. So the count even at two here on Williamson. And the leadoff man takes one in the dirt for ball three. So a quality at bat here by the leadoff hitter. So a full count. Williamson just trying to find his way on, and he does. He takes that for a ball four, and that is a quality at bat out of the leadoff spot. And that'll bring up the power hitting Leo Odom. Odom tied for the lead and home runs for this Bobcat offense. He had a triple the other night. So Williamson stands at first. And Lowe misses outside for ball one. Odom comes into the game hitting 303 so far on the season. But he's been the spark in the lineup when they needed him. The 1 0 breaking ball misses Lowe. And after a leadoff walk, Lowe has thrown two straight balls here to Odom. Williamson, a good lead at first. And that one misses inside for ball three. So Odom, a 3-0 count. The Bobcats trying to have two base runners on here in the top of the first. And that one misses. So the Bobcats have runners on first and second now. No outs on back-to-back walks. And nobody better for this Bobcat offense. Landon Hawkins coming to the plate. But the pitching coach for this Tornado squad headed to the mound to calm his, to calm his pitcher down. So we will be back after the break. So we are back, and Eli Lowe has just towed the rubber. Landon Hawkins in the box for the Bobcats, and nobody better. Landon Hawkins leads the team in batting average with a 357 batting average on the season. And he could not have a more tone setter opportunity than he does right here. Williamson stands at second, Odom at first. And he takes the first pitch that he gets for ball one. A quality take there by Hawkins. Cade Clinton stands on deck for the Bobcats. 
Landon Hawkins takes another ball. So a 2-0 count here on Hawkins. So six straight balls. Milo has got us to where we're at now. Even after seven straight balls, I imagine Landon Hawkins has the green light. Not anymore as the count goes to 3 0. Hello. Struggling on the mound for the Tornadoes as of right now. So a 3 0 count on Hawkins. And there, the bases are loaded here in Summerall. Runners on first, second, and third for the Bobcats. And here comes Cade Clinton. And looks like there's already going to be a pitching change. So three hitters into the ball game, and Eli Lowe heads to second base, and the catcher, Ethan Walker, will be the new pitcher for the Tornadoes when we come back. This is Zane Barry, and you are listening to the Bobcat Baseball Network. So we are back live here in Summerall, and the bases are juice for the Bobcats. Williamson stands at third, Hawkins at second, or excuse me, Odom at second, Hawkins at first, and Cade Clinton now the hitter for the Bobcats. The new pitcher, Ethan Walker, throws a first pitch curveball for a strike, and that was the story of the night the other night. I mean, these this Purvis. Tornadoes pitching staff probably threw 60% breaking ball, and it was effective on this Bobcat on this Bobcat hitting team. But Clinton has a big opportunity here. Walker misses away for ball one. Clinton comes into the game hitting 339 on the season. Had a had a few strikeouts the other night against this Purvis squad. 
but he has an opportunity to make it up here as the bases are loaded, no outs. And that one misses in. And the Purvis fans, Purvis fans are really, really mad about that pitch. And I personally thought it was inside. And the 2 1 pitch. And that one catches the very outside part of the plate for strike two. So a 2 2 count here on Clinton. The Bobcats on the verge of scoring their first run of the game, and they are going to as that ball is driven up the middle. And Leo on them rounding first. I mean, rounding third, but they hold them up as the powerful arm of Jacob Parker out in center field is a big threat. But the Bobcats able to score one on the no-out single by Cade Clinton. Now the pitcher, Jack Miller, coming to the plate for the Bobcats. So Ethan Walker's first battery faces, drives a single up the middle, and the bases stay loaded, no outs for this Bobcat offense. But Miller takes that fastball for strike one. Miller had a few hits in the contest the other night. And he takes that one for ball one. Good check swing there by Miller. The backup catcher in for the Tornadoes now. And that one catches the very outside part of the plate. So Miller stands in the box with a 1-2 count. Just has to battle here. The catcher sets up away. And... Walker misses away for ball two. So the count goes to 2-2. No outs. Bases loaded. Odom at third. Hawkins at second. And Clinton at first. Drew Davis stands on deck. And Miller, a big swing and a miss for the first out of the inning. But now the hitter for the Bobcats, the shortstop, Drew Davis. Drew Davis was the heart and soul of this Bobcat offense a few nights ago. He had a double and a two-run shot in the first matchup of this series. And he takes that one for ball one. So a 1-0 count on Davis. And that one catches the very outside part of the plate for strike one. So as a Bobcat hitter, you have to see the zone here. This umpire likes him outside. And that's where Walker likes throwing it. That ball brings the count to 2-1. A big strikeout by Walker against Miller. Let's see if he can do it again here. Catcher sets up outside. The breaking ball. He turns on it, but it goes foul. So two strikes now on Davis. A big opportunity for Walker. Walker came into a very dangerous situation, trying to get himself out of it. And that one misses high. But Odom going to hit the brakes and go back to third. So a 3-2 count. Drew Davis, just a freshman, the big opportunity for him. And he takes that one for ball four. And the Bobcats are going to score another one here in the bottom of the first inning. And they take a 2 to nothing lead early here 
versus Purvis. And that'll bring up Kellen Garcia. Garcia has been a spark on this team for the Bobcats late in the season. And he takes that one for a strike right down the middle. So Hawkins stands at third. 0-1 pitch. Catches outside part of the plate for strike two. So two straight takes by Garcia and two straight strikes from Walker. So an 0-2 count. One out. Garcia puts a swing on it. They may be able, able to tag up on this. But it hits. Over there, Mr. Ronnie Smith. Down the right field line. So Garcia stays alive with the 0-2 count. So the 0-2 count on Garcia, one out. And a big swing and a miss. There by Garcia. And that'll give the Tornadoes two outs here in the bottom of the first inning. So Walker's second strikeout since he's coming to this ball game. If he can keep the score two to nothing, that will be huge for this Tornadoes team. The Bobcats send ST Moss to the plate. And try not to let the damage in there. The 1 0 pitch misses in the dirt. Most, who's hitting the, hit in the first two positions all season, moves down to the eighth spot in this game. Just trying to get some fastballs, and he hits this one to the third baseman. That's, and he beats it over there at third. So, a fantastic play. Over there by Cade Clinton, and a terrible decision by the third baseman for Purvis, and that's going to allow the runners all to advance 90 feet. And the Bobcats score their third run of the inning. And there was really no question about it. He was safe at third. But an unprecedented, unprecedented play over there by Turner, who has played fantastic defensively and made a good stop. Just made the wrong decision to either go to first or step on the bag, and he chose to step on the bag. And that one gets away from the catcher, and Clinton is coming home. And it's going to be a close play, and he is in safely for the fourth run of the inning. So the Bobcats take an early 4 to nothing lead here in Sumrall. And Drew Davis stands at third. And the pinch runner, Will Rayner, stands at second. Malik McNair in the box for the Bobcats. The nine-hole hitter for this Bobcats team. And the 2-0 pitch called a strike on McNair. And McNair cranks this one to center field. It could be trouble for Jacob Parker, and it's going to be. So the Bobcats are going to at least score two. McNair strolls in the second, and the Bobcats take a 6 to nothing lead. Malik McNair burns Jacob Parker, who was playing shallow out there in center. And if you are Coach Davis, this is... How you want to see your team respond after a tough Wednesday night. And we are back at the top of the lineup. Caden Williamson walked his first at bat, steps up to the plate. And he takes that one for ball one. So McNair, a spark here in this lineup tonight in Summerall. 
and he has a lot of wheels and a backup catcher in for Purvis. You may see him try something. That one misses away for ball two. So a 2-0 -oh count. Two outs. So a 2-1 count, two outs here on the Bobcats. And Williamson drives this one to right center. The right fielder runs for it, but he camps under it for out number three. So the Bobcats score six runs on two hits and one error. And we are headed to the top of the second. The Bobcats lead six to nothing. This is Zane Berry, and you are listening to the Bobcat Baseball. So we are back here in Sumrall. The Bobcats took a six to nothing lead here in the bottom of the first inning. And we start the top of the second. Cannon Turner, the hitter for the Tornadoes. I also have a very special shout out. My fiance watching tonight, Ms. Tay Collum, the coach, her assistant coach of the Summerall soccer team who just won their first state championship. And Turner hits this one to short. Drew Davis fields it cleanly, cleanly and throws it to first for out number one. So Miller gets in the hands of Turner for the first down of the inning. So Ethan Walker, the hitter for the Tornadoes now, and he pops this one up over there to second base. And Clinton comes in and makes the running grab for out number two. So two quick outs by Jack Miller. I don't bring up Austin Lawler. Lawler was the big bat for this Purvis Tornadoes team the other night. But Jack Miller gets in his hands there. The count goes to 0-1. So an 0-1 count. And he takes that one for strike two. So a 0-2 count, two outs. Here for Jack Miller. And the 0-2 pitch. And that was going to be chopped over there to third base. Hawkins 
Grabs it and makes a strike across the infield for out number three. So no runs on no hits and no errors for the Bob for the Tornadoes. And the Bobcats head to the plate. We will be back here in the bottom of the second inning. This is Zane Berry, and you are listening to Bobcat Baseball. So we are back here in the bottom of the second inning. Leo Odom set to lead things off for the Bobcats. Odom walked his first at bat. And that one misses for ball one. So the 1 0 count on Odom, and he drives this one. Over there to the shortstop, he makes a diving play, a great play, but unable to get him over there at first. So a leadoff single. By Leo Odom. And that'll bring up the third baseman, Landon Hawkins. Landon Hawkins also walked his first at bat. So the 0 1 pitch on Hawkins. So Landon Hawkins stands in the box with a 1-2 count. And he hits this one over there to the shortstop. This could be a double play. But they do not get Hawkins at first. They do get Odom at second. So one out now on the Bobcats. And Cade Clinton, who got everything started for the Bobcat offense, just an inning ago, steps in the box. So one out, Hawkins goes on the pitch, and a good strike over there by the catcher, and that's going to get Hawkins. So the second out of the inning comes via the put out from the catcher. So two outs now on the Bobcats. Cade Clinton in the box. He has no one count. And a big swing and a miss there. And that brings the count to 0 2. And a cold strike three. So the Bobcats, no runs, no hits, no errors. 
And they leave nobody left on as we head to the top of the third inning. This is Zane Berry, and you are listening to the Bobcat Baseball Network. So we head to the top of the third inning. The Summerall Bobcats have a six to nothing lead here against the Tornadoes. And I have a special guest of Summerall High School, Coach Matt Thomas, stands in the booth with me. Coach Matt, how you doing? Zane, I, it is exciting for me to finally be on the air with you. I've, I've had a chance to listen a little bit this year. Not as much as maybe some because I have been in and around the ballpark and not on the streaming, but... Uh, I have heard good things myself, and I've heard good things from others who enjoy your broadcast. So well, thank yes, you sir. for what you do. Well, thank you, and uh, and I appreciate appreciate you taking your time to come up here and and sit down and talk with me. And I just really wanted you up here just to talk about some exciting things going around summer all right now, uh, some several different projects. But not only that, the athletics department is really taking a big leap. Um, from basketball to football, softball, going to state, soccer winning their first state. Ch I mean, it is all over the place yeah. right now. Don't leave out the cheer bunch and don't leave out the show choir gang. And I'm, uh, our archery team is, is going to compete at state. Powerlifting is headed tomorrow to state. And you're right, Zane, there's a lot of good stuff going on. Um, you know, we're, we're super fortunate in this area. If you look around the stadium right now, it's packed out with people on both sides. Um, around the outfield fences. It's starting to fill up like playoff time usually does with summer all baseball. Yes, sir. So, yeah, I mean, you know, you mentioned the school thing. Uh, we got a lot happening, not just with athletics, but, but school-related as well this time of year. That's right. Yes, sir. And and uh, I think anybody in the area is super excited. You see how the community really I, – this is a special place, especially for community. They all come together. I mean – this place gets packed out, and like you said, playoff baseball time, it, there won't be an empty seat in this house. And, and you can say the same about, it, honestly, everything that Seminole has. And that's going to be a double here by the Tornadoes. So a one-out double. Now, look, Zane, don't let me talk you out of talk you out of commentating. Yeah. No, you Sometimes I can get a little long-winded. <laughs> and when I'm talking about things that, I, that I'm passionate about, and, hey. and I'm passionate about this school, so right. don't let me get carried away. And I am too, I can promise you. But but a one-out double there by Paxton Cooper gets us back to the top of the order for the Tornadoes. And JoJo Parker, the lefty, um, a very impressive kid. He flew out his first at-bat to right field, but steps in the box here with a big opportunity with Cooper in scoring position. So, Coach Matt, yeah, I mean, everything is super exciting, and I work in the housing market, and I can see how much the school has changed not only people's lives but the economy around here. I mean, people are dying to move to Summerall. Yeah, you're exactly right, Zane, and we see that with, with enrollment, you know, um, from teaching and coaching here, uh, what, 12 years ago to now, 
um, seeing the high school go from 650 when your older brother was entering as a freshman to That's I right. mean, 450, 450 when your brother was a freshman to 630 we have right now. Mm. Yeah, pretty sizable jump. That, that is that's a big jump, and I don't imagine. I know, I know we're a four A school, but the way the the growth is going, us and Purvis have to be have to be moving up here shortly. I don't I don't know the rules on that. Now you you probably know a little better than I do, but I can I know Purvis is growing just as some all is. Mm, yeah, we're you know that's the the neat thing about this five eighty nine rivalry is um, we've got good friends that that we, we have down down the road in Purvis. And, you know, JoJo Parker's in right there with a the ground ball to first base that uh, Leo Odom steps on the back for the second out. But JoJo and Jake Parker go to church with us. And a lot of these boys on both teams church together. They summer ball together. And so, you know, it's, a, it's just a great district-wide environment. And I can kind of speak on this because I played in it. You've coached in it. Um, you know, this means a lot to these guys because they're going to see their buddies at church on Sunday, and you want a little leg up. And with Purvis winning on Wednesday night, um, this is some of those opportunities to say, hey, we've beat y'all twice this year, you know. Right. And, and that's the fun part about it. It's really no hate in the rivalry. It's a lot of the I, – I would say a lot of the uh, the rivalry comes from the two towns rather than the two teams on the field. Right. No, so, you know, I'm, I'm close friends with a lot of people that, that work and teach – and, and our school leaders over in the Purvis area. And you know what it's like having an older brother, Zane. I mean, it's, it's like that sibling rivalry where, right. uh, you know, you see brothers playing basketball in the driveway, and, and they will fight and scrap and, you know, really go after it with each other like like these boys do on the baseball field. But then when it's all over, they can hang out at That's Sonic right. and, and play on the same summer ball teams. And, and you know, they're, they're great friends. That's they're fierce right. competitors. And, and the cool thing is, like you said uh, – I mean, you know these guys from the community in the bottom. And the Tornadoes just score their first run of the game. Here in the top of the third inning, Paxton Cooper scores on a wild pitch. But the Bobcats have two outs, and Jacob Parker, the big lefty, stands in the box for the Tornadoes. He has a 3-0 count. Um, yeah, I mean, these kids have probably been playing against each other since they were eight years old, yep. you know. So, look, I got you a little off topic a second ago. You were talking about the growth of the schools. And um, both Summerall and Purpose through that time have kind of been about the same size of schools and seen growth. So, you know, pay attention to what's coming out in the next few weeks um, in the school district and in the county about addressing some of the growth just district-wide. Yes, sir. And, and some plans that, that our superintendent has for addressing that growth, for making uh, steps forward. Uh, for our kids in our district, there's there's some cool stuff coming. And some cool stuff coming on our campus here in the next couple of weeks. Absolutely. And I think uh, I think everybody's really excited about it. And, Coach, I want to ask you this. How is being a principal at the high school and, and coming to these games – so you, you probably were going to come to these games regardless, mm. but your, your son is a pitcher for the Bobcat team, and how fun has it been seeing him? I know you've been here for a long time, and you were a coach here at one time. Um, how cool is it? It's kind of a full circle moment. It's neat. Um, and, you know, not just my son, but there are others in this senior group uh, that he played on a little uh, travel ball team with growing up. So there were a lot of times, like when you were playing, Zane, we'd be on the old softball field behind the left field wall, and we'd walk up on the old deck out there by the, That's uh, right. the old softball field house, and there'd be a bunch of 9-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds watching you and Dennis and that bunch. That's uh, right. Billy Garrity play ball when y'all were here and then and that just seems like it and I'm probably, you can probably say the same thing it seems like it happened really really fast to where um, we are now I mean I remember my mom bringing me and me and Billy playing behind the summer of baseball stands playing you know wall ball and handball and Chase Llewellyn and those guys the legends being out here and you were a coach on those teams right and so yeah, and, and coming back, it's neat. I, I got a chance. I've been super blessed. I got a chance to be in an elementary school. My kids were elementary school age. And that one driven to left field. And McNair tries to catch it, but it goes up the wall. So Parker rounds third. And Drew Swan. It's a two-out double to bring the score to 6-2. to two. So the, this Purvis offense finding some life. 
here in the top of the third inning. And they are electric right now. The stands, you know, and, and you can attest to this, in this building right now, it does not feel like a 6-2 to two game. Well, I think when we played early in the year and it was kind of one-sided, it didn't feel like, it, it never feels like anything but a close game. Right. And, and that's the reason why this game is so fun to play in. Um, and baseball is a really cool sport. The game's never over until it's over. And so, uh, I mean, even though the Bobcats had a 6 to nothing lead here in the first, this game is far from over, especially in this rivalry. So Jack Miller on the mound. He's got two outs. And Walker Hudson, the DH, the hitter for the Tornadoes now. You know, it always seems like, Zane, that there, this season that there's an inning where we have we, we hit a bump or two. And if we can make it through that inning relatively unscathed, we're okay. That's right. And this one driven to left field, but McNair camps under it. And he makes the grab for out number three. So the, the Purvis Tornadoes able to grab two more runs here in the top of the third inning. But the Bobcats maintain a 6-2 to two lead as we head into the bottom half of the third. This is Zane Berry, and you are listening to the Bobcat Baseball Network. So we are back live here in Summerall. A 6-2 to two lead for the Bobcats. And Jack Miller, the pitcher, heads to the box to lead things off here in the bottom of the third inning. So the lineup, Miller, Davis, and Garcia do up for the Bobcats. Miller struck out his first at-bat, but the Bobcats trying to tack on some entrance runs here in the third. And that one, a called strike on the outside part of the plate. Now, Coach Matt, um, talking about several exciting things around Summerall. Um, I know you all have a bond issue that's that's in the air right now, and I know you all have a on-campus project. Um, if you want to talk about those things, feel more than welcome to. I'm sure all of our viewers would love to hear about both of those. Right. So I'll leave the bond issue talk to our superintendent, Dr. Hampton, but that's just pay attention because that's what's going to address some of the growing schools in our area, Purvis, Summerall, Oak Grove Middle. And so he's got plans that I'll let him share about that. But on our campus, um, on our campus, 3-1 count to uh, Jack Miller right there. Thank you, Zane. That was and, a, uh, yeah, that was a good take there by Miller. But, um, so, yeah. but on our campus, recently we, we, um, we requested uh, some legislative help. Miller takes the ball low, so a leadoff walk there by Miller. We requested some legislative help with addressing some needs between uh, in the little area between some of our middle school and high school. And so with help from local legislators like Joey Fillingain and, uh, and and Joseph Tubb and Dale Lucas and um, Senator Polk, $1.4 million appropriation that we got for a community-funded project on the campus of Summer Ohio. Okay. So one thing that I always try to say, Zane, is never at any point was any of that money going to be going toward any other school or any other teacher. That's right. going to be, if that money didn't build a courtyard in the middle of Summerall, it was going to build a sidewalk in Pascagoula or, right. a, or a you know pavilion in Grenada. It was going to be designated for community projects 
and um, and we, we got a piece of that money. So right in the middle of our two campuses and right in the middle of the town of Summerall, we're going to build a, a, a super nice $1.4 million courtyard that we can. And that one, Drew Davis flies out to right field. The right fielder camps under it for the first down of the inning. So it'll be a courtyard that we can use for the homecoming parade, for uh, nighttime or anytime. Uh, concerts and outdoor events and we can actually fit all of the high school and middle school and even some of the elementary school students into that area at one time we can't do that anywhere else right now no that is super exciting and and you know i've heard about it and i i've put a bid on some material for it but i didn't know how serious it was and and that's exciting for the town of summerall um but i do want to ask you i mean is this just a town thing or is or is this just a high school thing or is the town going to be able to use it as well yeah, no, that's, and that's one of the cool things about it. Um, Terry Smith, the principal at Summerall Middle School, and I kind of dreamed up this idea about four years ago. We've had several people from the community involved along the way because we want the community to have access to it. We, you know, we told them it's... And this one, driven to left by Garcia. But the left fielder makes easy work of it for out number two. So after a leadoff walk, Drew Davis flies out to right, and Kellen Garcia lines out to left for the second out of the inning. And that'll bring up the catcher, S.T. Most, here with two outs. Braylon Harrison stands on first. Yeah, but it's, it'll be a it'll be a cool project, Dan. Every, we hope that everybody in the area has access to it. That's what that's why we did it the way we did. It's going to be lit. So if anybody want, anyone wants to be out there at night, I don't mean lit in the way that it's going to be like the new it, like it's going to be lit, but it, it will actually have lighting, like oh, you know, illumination man, at night. Yeah, that's a big deal around here. But it'll be lit in that sense too. I think, uh, I think with Summerall, you know, Summerall's always kind of been a very traditional, s smaller town. But opportunities like this, I mean, the community can really come together. We have the Lions Park, um, but this is a big opportunity for Summerall to really get some right. stuff going and, and really enjoy the community. Yeah, um, no, we're excited about it. And, you know, some people have asked, hey, is there a possibility that Summerall High School might move? And, and does that hurt your feelings? with um you know the money that we had appropriated for the courtyard and and the answer is a little bit yes but the big idea was to have something cool for summerall not right. just to have something cool for just summerall high school so and i think that shows how much people care about this community that's right no yeah. doubt about it you know that, it's so much bigger than with you being here for so long like obviously you care about this and that's what that's a dream for a principal um out of people in the community like the, the, our high school principal really cares about the community enough even though if the high school moves the community has somewhere to go and uh i can tell you firsthand we appreciate your your uh you know honesty and donation to the town well, of summerall look now i look i as demonstrated by this inning that i've spent with you on the radio i'll talk <laughs> right and so and a lot of times i'll, I'll talk about you know, the cool things that are happening, but I am a small piece of a lot of people that begged and borrowed and asked for this. So, that's right. you know, if I started naming people, I could name them for three innings, Zane, but they, <laughs> there have been so many people that are willing to help in this community um, that, uh, yeah, I might have my name on some of it, but just a small piece. So a two-out walk there to ST Most, and that'll bring up Malik McNair, who really busted this thing open. Back in the first inning with a base clearing double, and he has an opportunity to go to do it here again. Yeah, we, coach, we appreciate you and and everything that you do for the town of Summerall. And as somebody who really cares about this town, I mean, I grew up here, went to school here, my mom taught here, my brother graduated from here. This is a special place to uh, to a lot of people, and to see somebody, and I know it's not just you, all the background people as well. Um, we appreciate what everybody has done and what makes this place awesome. And McNair takes a pitch. So the bases are back loaded for the Bobcats. Caden Williams in the top of the lineup. Due up here in the bottom of the third inning. Now, Coach, um, you got nine weeks test coming up, or end of the year test. You got, yep. you got graduation. Um, talk about this time of the year. 
maybe not only for you, but, but, but for the school. Golly, Zane, you know, I told our, our faculty the other day in, in our weekly memo that we sent out, I said, get ready because this last part goes fast. <laughs> and it really does. You know, like we talk about, we talk about your time as a player to now what? Five years, six years later, yep, six. sitting in the booth with a receding hairline and a growing family, <laughs> and and you know it happens fast. It, it happens um, a little too fast. But yep. you know this last part of the year does the same thing. Yep, and you know it's it. While you're a student, you know you want it to fly by. You're like, golly, I'm ready to get out of school, get me to college, get me to summer. But you don't realize, like these are the best years of your life. I would. I so, yeah, look, so we got graduation on the football field May 18th. Okay. That's a Saturday. Uh, so walking back from that, we got end of the year state testing. We know that our kids are going to do great again this year. Um, we just celebrated. And the 2-2 pitch barely misses on Williamson. So the bases loaded count full. The runners will be stealing on this pitch. So Williamson, a big opportunity. I'm going to get out of your way and let this happen because something's going to happen on this pitch. Something, I got a good feeling. And Williamson has a big opportunity to get some entrance runs. And he hits this one down the third base line. And Andy Davis makes a heck of a play over there at third. So we just had an A school celebration um, for the way that our kids performed last year. And, and that was strategic. We want it going in. You mentioned end of the year testing going into that. We yes, wanted sir. our kids to know, hey, look, we appreciate what you did. We, we, we're thankful for the hard work. But, hey, guess what? We're about to get after it again. And I, our teachers have really been preparing kids. And our kids have been meeting the uh, meeting the standard. And the full count pitch. This one flown up, but it's going to be a tough time of the night. He can't see it. Nobody can see it. The left fielder lets it drop, and that's going to be a base clearing single. Gosh, a mighty on a miss pop up. Zane, do you remember last year in the playoffs about this time? Would we miss two or three fly balls in a row? This down at Purvis, like when we were on defense. And so we had that coming back to us. Right. They owed us from a year ago. They owed us. But that is, this is the toughest time of the day to play um, when it's just just dark enough and just light enough for you to lose that ball in the air. And, and JoJo Parker had trouble with it over there at short. A guy who does not make many mistakes made a big one here. And the Bobcats take a 9-2 to lead in the bottom of the third inning. And Leo Odom hammers this one to left field. And Jacob Parker makes a run for it, but he's unable to get it. Williamson rounding third. Trying to score all the way from first, and he's going to. And so he scores from first, and Leo Odin advances to third on the throw. So a two-out double here by Leo Odin, and he advanced to third on the throw. So the Bobcat offense coming alive. So let's go back to uh, to a couple of pitches, Zane. So if you're, you played middle infield growing up. Oh, yeah. Right? So as soon as Parker, as soon as he lost that ball, he throws his hands out to his side, letting – now, I guess he's letting the whole ballpark know. Right. I have no idea where it is. Is that something you want to act like you're going to catch it because you don't want the runner moving maybe as fast, or do you just let your whole team know? I have no idea where it is. So, generally, uh, with two outs, probably not. I mean, you know, if it's one ounce or, or no out, um, I think that's a very smart play. But two outs, I think you need to show your teammates, and then if they can see it, well, I mean, I've always been taught, if you can see it, you point it out. Right. And so you showing that you can't see it may ignite somebody to point it out and, and give you a hint to where the ball is, and you can pick it up at the last second. But that's just a tough play. I mean, it's there's a lot going on. and Because you know if he acts like he's going to catch it, the left fielder's not coming as hard. Exactly. And this one driven to center field, but Jacob Parker makes a diving play out there in center. So, Coach Matt, thank you for your time here. I we, enjoyed it. We appreciate all the information, and thank you for, for everything you do. I'm going to come somebody. back someday when I'm not doing also doing principal <laughs> stuff at a ball game, Zane. Well, I, and then we can we maybe maybe on a road game or something like that, and we can just be radio buddies. Well, I am always ready for you. So thank you, Coach, and uh, you have been great. Well, you do a great job, man. Thank you for what you do, Zane. Thank you, sir.
So the Bobcats have a 10-2 lead. Here heading to the top of the fourth inning, we have some shout-outs. I'm watching from Purvis, Mississippi. They say go Jake and Jake and JoJo, Aunt Tammy and Uncle Brad rooting for the Tornadoes. And they say beat the Bobcats. Miss Tammy and Uncle Brad, um, it's not looking too hot for you, but we appreciate you tuning in. And uh, thank you for for watching and, and sending me a shout-out. Another shout-out, Miss Miss Glenda and Mr. Jim Cody, you're watching and cheering on the Bobcats. Regular listeners and Raymond and Truvy McCraney, as always, watching from Lincoln Road here in Hattiesburg. And Jack Miller starts Turner off of the fastball, and he hits it to center field for out number one. And, of course, Miss Christy Martin watching all the way from Folsom, Louisiana. Mr. Christie, thank you for tuning in again. So if you want to get shouted out and let me know where you're watching from here at 601-408-0292. So now stepping up to the plate for the Tornadoes catcher, Ethan Walker. Jack Miller has been very good on the mound so far for this Bobcat team. He ran into a little trouble at the top of last inning, but other than that, he has been lights out. And that one fouled straight back by Walker. So the Bobcats with a 10-2 lead here against the Tornadoes. And we appreciate Coach Matt Thomas coming on here. Um, Coach Matt, the principal of Summerall High School, and he is just a ball of life and and he is doing a lot for this community so far. And a questionable call goes Summerall's way, and that brings the count to 1-2. So 1-2 count, one out. And Walker takes a breaking ball in the dirt. A good block on the plate by Moss. So a lot of exciting things happening in Summerall. Not only athletics, but in the school. So the 2-2 pitch. This one fouled straight back. So a 2-2 count. Here on Walker. And he fouls this one straight back. So a good at bat by him just fighting. Up there with two strikes. So a full count. Here on Walker, Jack Miller in the windup, and he delivers, and that one gets in on the hands of Walker for out number two. So a, so a line drive over there to Drew Davis, and he doesn't even move, and he catches it for out number two. And one of the biggest shout-outs of the night, Mr. Vince and Miss Tracy McGrew watching, um, the parents of Logan McGrew, who played catcher here in Summerall, and went on to play several years in college. Just some of the nicest people you can meet there. This is their first time checking in. And they say go Bobcats. So two outs now for Jack Miller. So a 1-0 pitch. And that's a called strike. Austin Lawler got things started in the top of the inning. And that one, a tough play by Davis, but he bare hands it and makes an incredible play over there at shortstop. And that might be the best play I've seen all season. That ball sp spinning, takes a wicked bounce. Davis bare hands it and flicks it over to first for the third out of the inning. 
So the Bobcats have a 10-2 lead as we head into the bottom of the fourth inning. This is Zane Barry, and you are listening to the Bobcat Baseball Network. So leading things off here for the Bobcats in the bottom of the fourth inning, number two, Clay, Cade Clinton. Clinton, the right fielder for this Bobcat offense, and he got this, this game opened up with a single back in the first inning. He takes a fastball for strike one. This coaching staff has to be excited about what they've seen so far tonight. I mean, this is a very good Purvis team, and this is the third time they've actually played each other. The first two times, or the first time was in the Rex Adidas tournament. And then the second time was just a few days ago down in Purvis. And if the score stands as is, the Bobcats will be the district champs, I believe. Clinton takes that breaking ball for strike two. So one week left in the season. The Bobcats usually play a district team next week. Clinton takes that one for strike three. So the Bobcats usually play another district opponent the last week of the season, but this this year, only four teams in the district. So next week's games will be all non-district matchups. So Jack Miller, the pitcher tonight for the Bobcats, steps up to the plate. He takes that for ball one. So Miller stands in the box. Drew Davis on deck. And two runs will put the 10 run roll in order. The good thing for the Bobcats so far, they still have yet to pitch or start their best two starting pitchers, but they have gotten quality starts out of Braden Smith the other night in his first start of the season. And then Jack Miller tonight. And the Purvis Tornadoes have pitched. Everybody you'd think they'd pitch. You know, they pitched the, both the Parker boys a few nights ago, and now they've pitched Eli Lowe and Ethan Walker. The one-two pitch on, on Miller, and he takes that one up and away for ball two. So a two-two count here on Miller. And he hits us from the third. Turner charges and makes easy work of it for out number two. So now the hitter for the Bobcats, the shortstop, Drew Davis. And a big swing by him on the breaking ball. So no one count here on Davis. And he takes that one way outside for strike two. So 
The 0-2 pitch. Misses in the other batter's box. So Davis, the shortstop, who made a fantastic play just in a half inning ago. And he hits this one. And a good play over there by the Tornado shortstop as he jumps up and gets the grab for out number three. So no runs, no hits, no errors for the Bobcats. And we head to the top of the fifth inning. The Bobcats have a 10-2 lead here in Summerall, and we will be back. This is Zane Berry, and you are listening to Bobcat Baseball. So we are back here in the top of the fifth inning. The Bobcats have a 10 to two lead and Jack Miller is still on the mound for the Bobcats. Eli Lowe, who started the game on the mound for the Purvis Tornadoes, steps in the box to lead things off here in the top of the fifth inning. And Miller, a beautiful pitch, but it misses Lowe. For ball two. And this one is absolutely hammered. But Caden Williamson steps under it for out number one. And that ball looked like he was going a lot further off the bat of low. But Williamson camps under it over there by the 370 sign for out number one. That'll bring up Paxton Cooper. Cooper hit a double his last at bat. And he has been very good the past two games. But he takes that one inside for ball one. Another special shout out. One of my parents here from Purvis. I coach a 13 year old team on the weekends. And uh, sometimes assistant coach CJ Redland who's a coach here at Purvis High School, checking in saying, Go Naders. I cannot wait to see you tomorrow if the score holds up. So 1-1 one, one count, one out. Here for the Bobcats. And this one driven to right field. But Clinton makes easy work of it over there for out number two. So a good back-to-back at-bats for the Tornadoes. Just unable to fall. But if there's somebody that can make it happen, he is stepping in the box now, Mr. JoJo Parker. Pine Belt Sports Player of the Year just a year ago. He was also Mr. Baseball for 4A last year. 
But he takes that for strike two. So two straight breaking balls here on Parker. And he's down with an 0-2 count. And that one misses in the dirt for ball one. And that one just out of play. So JoJo Parker staying alive. Here were two strikes. Miller in the windup and the pitch, the breaking ball. Davis makes a heck of a play over there short for out number three. So the Bobcats, two runs away from heading back home via the 10-run rule if they're able to get it in the bottom half of, fifth, of the fifth inning. So this is Zane Berry, and you are listening to Bobcat Baseball. So we are back live here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Kellen Garcia set to lead things off for the Bobcats. The Bobcats two runs away from sending everybody home early. And guys, I made a big mistake earlier. It was, it was not Chris Redlin checking in. It was his son who's on my team, a very special player who's going to be a very special player on this per. Purvis Tornadoes team one day, Mr. C.J. Redlin. So, C.J., I will see you tomorrow as we play in McGee in a travel ball tournament. So, a new pitcher for the Tornadoes, Cannon Turner, checks in on the mound. Trying to keep the Bobcats at halt. And Garcia takes that fastball for strike one. Now a 1-2 count here on Garcia. And if you have a special guest that you'd like to hear from, and that was three feet out of the batter's box. For some reason, the catcher here for Purvis was about to throw it over there to third base. That one fouled off by Garcia. So a great two teams, obviously. Purvis, the, the state champs from just a year ago. And they didn't lose many bodies on this team. 
That one hit the center field. It's going to be trouble. And it lands in the Bermuda Triangle out there. And the leadoff man's aboard here for the Bobcats in the bottom of the fifth inning. And now the catcher, S.T. Most, heads to the plate for the Bobcats. Yeah, so this Purvis team just a year ago defeated Summerall right here on this field and advanced to the state championship. And I believe that it's going to be these two teams fighting for it again at some point in this playoffs. That one misses high for ball one on Most. And that's going to be a series that you want to be in attendance for. I love all my viewers. But if you think about coming to a game, this is the game to come to. It's a always a fun atmosphere. So a 1-1 count here on Moss. He tried to bump one, but unable to lay it down. Turner misses away for ball two. So we talk about this Purvis Tornadoes team and how exciting or how good they are going to state last year, but this Bobcats team, a very young team, went to South State just a year ago. And really, you can say the state championship was won on this field in game three. The Tornadoes made pretty easy work of their opponents in the state championship. And the Bobcats gave them a lot of trouble, but they handled it well. So exciting two programs for Crosstown Rivals. And, and honestly, I love both of these squads. I'm excited to see the future of all these kids out here on this field. There's a lot of athletes who are going to be great collegiate athletes as well one day. And, you know, that's the cool part about this. A lot of these guys will probably be teammates down the line in college here at Pearl River or Jones Community College. So just a fun atmosphere to play in here in Summerall. So a 3-2 count here on Most. And that one misses away. So the first two hitters for the Bobcats get aboard. And that'll bring up the left fielder, Malik McNair, and the top of the lineup for the Bobcats right after him. So Garcia stands at second. And Will Will Rayner stands at first. McNair squared the bunt, but the ball got in on him and just nicked his bat for strike one. And now would be a great time to give our live stream sponsors their thanks. Jana King, BB Geomatics LLC. Diversified Forestry Management, American Graphics, Landry Lewis, Germany Architects, Come South, Chad Turner with Shelter Insurance, the Covington County Hospital and Express Care in Sumrall, Alpha Insurance, the Spencer Nixon Agency, and Pine Belt Chevrolet. Thank you all for your contributions and allowing this to happen. The 1-1 one, one pitch. A called strike for strike two. And McNair has a one-two count. Turner trying to get himself out of the jam. And that one is going to be a called strike three. So a big strikeout there by Cannon Turner. But that will bring up the center fielder for the Bobcats, the leadoff hitter, Caden Williamson. The winning run stands on first base. Williamson, Odom, and Hawkins do up for the Bobcats. Williamson takes that for strike one. Williamson, who started the year as a switch hitter, 
ever since about midseason has only hit right-handed, and that is when he really started to make a difference in this Bobcat lineup. But he takes that for strike two. Coach Davis, up third, telling him to get ready to hit as he watches that second strike. So an 0-2 count here on Williamson. That one. And that one way outside, but it called strike three. Here on Williamson. But that brings up Leo Odom. Odom has the ability to end this thing with one pitch. And he picks the second. Garcia slides in safely. So a no count. Two outs. Garcia at second. Rainer at first. And he hammers this one. It's going to be hit to left field. The left fielder running around out there. Barely makes the grab. He caught it behind his head. And that would have ended the ball game if he would have missed it. But he does end up grabbing it out there in left field. We head to the top of the sixth inning here in Summerall. No runs, no hits. No errors. Two men left on, and we are headed to the top of the six. This is Zane Berry, and you are listening to Bobcat Baseball. So we are back here in the top of the sixth inning. Jack Miller toes the rubber again here for the Bobcats. And the center fielder, Jacob Parker, stands in the box for the Tornadoes. And he hammers this one. And back, back, back. And you can pucker up and kiss that baby goodbye. Jacob Parker puts one over the center field wall. And the Tornadoes cut the lead. 10 to 3. So a great piece of hitting there by Parker. If you're Jack Miller, you got to be excited that it's just a solo, solo home runs. As dangerous as, as dangerous as a hitter, Jacob Parker is, and as far as he hit that ball, Jack Miller can breathe a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and that one catches the outside part of the plate for, for strike one. If you would have seen how far that ball went, that was impressive. <laughs> so now Drew Swan steps up to the plate here for the Tornadoes. Yeah. And Miller. Gets a foul ball there. So a one-two count on Swan. Miller back in the zone after giving up the leadoff home run. And 
And the one-two pitch. That one misses low in the dirt for ball two. So the 2-2 count here on Swan. And that one a called strike three. So Jack Miller gets a strikeout for the first out of the inning. Now on the DH, Walker Hudson, the hitter for the Tornadoes. Jack Miller. I mean, he is... He gave up the long home run, but he has been phenomenal through five and a third inning. So the 0 1 pitch here on Hudson. That one misses low in the dirt for ball one. And the 1-1 pitch lifted to center field. But Caden Williamson camps under it for out number two. So two outs now. And the pitcher, Cannon Turner, steps up the plate up to the plate for the Tornadoes. And Miller in the windup. Throws the breaking ball for strike one. Miller has thrown a lot of strikes tonight. But that one misses in the dirt for ball one. If you have any recommendations on who I should get on next, text me at 601-408-0292 and let me know who you want to listen to. That one misses in for ball two. We have Coach Pr- or Principal, Coach Matt Thomas, on in the earlier innings, and he was phenomenal. So if there's anybody else you want to hear from, shoot me a text, and I will try to get them on. So the 2-0 count here on Turner, and this one fouled out of play. So the hit total tonight, only six to four, the Bobcats advantage. But the Bobcats have a 10 to three lead here in the top of the sixth inning. That breaking ball misses high for ball three, so a full count now on Turner. Two outs. And this one popped up to the infield. And Garcia misses it. And Coach Davis comes out of the dugout for frustration, yelling at the shortstop Drew Davis, his son, saying that ball has to be caught. But that'll bring up the catcher, Ethan Walker. And Walker, a bat in this lineup that can make you pay for a mistake like that. So Turner stands at first. Walker in the box for the Tornadoes. And Miller was walking off the field. Should have been out number three. But a simple mistake. The Bobcats still have one out to get here in the top of the sixth inning. And that one, a breaking ball called strike on the inside part of the plate. (laughs) 
And a big swing and a miss by Walker. So the count goes to 0 2 here with two outs. Ethan Walker chokes up on the bat. Turner gets his lead at first. And Jack Miller comes set. And the pitch, the breaking ball misses high for ball one. So a one two count here on Walker. And the breaking ball, and that's going to be a called strike three. So the Bobcats head to the bottom half of the sixth inning, and they lead 10 to three here in Summerall. This is Zane Berry, and you are listening to the Bobcat Baseball Network. So we are back, and Landon Hawkins set to lead things off here in the bottom half of the sixth inning for the Bobcats. Hawkins, Clinton, and Miller do up. Cannon Turner toes the mound for his second inning of work. He misses in for ball one here. And that one hits Hawkins. And he will, takes his time, headed to first base. And the leadoff hit by pitch. Gets the leadoff runner on. And that'll bring up Cade Clinton. Clinton, the right fielder for the Bobcats. Funny story, I have known Cade Clinton his entire life. So talking about full circle moment, it is awesome to see him do what he's done this year. The Bobcats in need of three runs here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And Clinton fouls that one straight back. So Clinton, Miller, and then Davis do up for the Bobcats. Hawkins stands at first. And that one hammered to the shortstop. JoJo Parker falls to his knees, throws it to second for out number one, and then they throw it to first for the double play. A fantastic double play by the middle infield here for Purvis. 
You just have to tip your hat to JoJo Parker. He was falling to his right. Gets on the knee and throws it over there to Eli Lowe. And Eli Lowe with a good turn over there at second. So two outs now. And Jack Miller, the hitter for the Bobcats, he fouls this one. On to the football field. And the 0-1 pitch. This is up and in for ball two, or for ball one. Jack Miller hits this one into the four hole. And a great grab over there by Eli Lowe, and he spins on the ground, but unable to get him. A fantastic play there again by Eli Lowe. Well, that's a infield hit here for Jack Miller with two outs. The Bobcats pinch runner, Braylon Harrison, comes to run for the pitcher. And now the hitter for the Bobcats, Drew Davis, the shortstop. He takes that one up for ball one. Davis second on the team in batting average so far this season. So the 1 0 count. That one misses away for ball two. Excuse me. Davis was third on the team in batting average. Cade Clinton has climbed those charts to second. Davis takes that for ball three. So a 3 0 count here on Davis. Trying to extend the inning. Turner able to throw a strike and bring the count to 3-1. Turner has looked good out of the bullpen for the Tornadoes. And this one, it's going to be trouble over there for the third baseman. He throws it to second, but there's two outs. So a fielder's choice allows Drew Davis and Braylon Harrison to advance 90 feet. Now the hitter for the Bobcats, Kellen Garcia. Yeah, so a play by the third baseman who is filling in for the now pitcher, Cannon Turner, with two outs. Should have just went to first, but decided to go to second. And Eli Lowe, luckily, was paying attention and saves that ball from going into right field. That one misses away for ball two. And Kellen Garcia has been really good over there at second base for the Bobcats. Trying to extend the inning. Give the Bobcats the opportunity to win it this bottom half of the sixth. So Garcia with a one two count. Cannon Turner on the mound trying to give his Purvis Tornado squad one last opportunity. But he misses away. The Bobcats just need three outs if they're not able to score three here. So the 2-2 count, and a big swing and a miss by Garcia, and the Tornadoes and the Bobcats head to the dugout. No runs on one hit, and no errors. Two men left on for the Bobcats. They are three outs away from winning this ball game. This is Zane Berry, and you are listening to Bobcat Baseball.
As we get ready to start the top of the seventh inning. I just want to say, I'm sorry if I'm not able to get to your shout out. My phone is going absolutely nuts. My fiance is getting on to me right now. My son, Starkberry, my dog, is also tuned in right now. So shout out to them too. Those two are the loves of my life. Mason Maxey also checking in. Mr. Mason, a sales representative for Magnolia Insulation. So leading things off. Here are four of the tornadoes. Austin Lawler in the box. Austin Lawler, Eli Lowe, and Paxton Cooper do up for the tornadoes. But Jack Miller's throwing three straight balls. And a ball four. So Austin Lawler passes the bat back to Eli Lowe. And the pitching coach comes out to talk to Jack Miller for the first time tonight. Jack Miller, who's been phenomenal all night, has his first pitcher's meeting for six innings. So Eli Lowe, the hitter for the Tornadoes now. He takes the breaking ball for strike one. And like I said the other night, the statistic is crazy on the percentage of pitchers that throw a strike out after a pitcher's meeting. It's like 75%. And he's throwing two straight here to Lowe. So low in the box, Cooper on deck. And this one kind of fisted to right field, but Cade Clinton with a fantastic play over there in right field, and he runs into the fence to make the out. He probably ran 40 yards on the line drive to make that grab, but he does for out number one. And that brings up Paxton Cooper. Cooper, a very impressive Bat in this Burma's Tornadoes lineup. So Cooper in the box. Lawler it stands at first. And that one found straight back. Miller's got one out. Trying to go the complete seven innings. So the 0 1 pitch, one out. Cooper takes that ball outside. So Odom, not even holding Lawler near first over there. Miller gets a foul ball. So he has Cooper 1 2. One out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. So the one-two pitch. And that one's going to be a called strike three. So Miller gets another strikeout. And he is one out away from going the complete game here against the Purvis Tornadoes. Talk about a good performance. 
Jack Miller has been outstanding tonight. But JoJo Parker steps up to the plate here for the Tornadoes. They have got the shift on them, and they hit it up the middle. Garcia fills it at second and tosses it to Davis at, first, at second. And it came out of Davis's glove, but they call him out. And that will be your ball game, folks. The Bobcats win here in Summerall of a score of 10 to 3 against the Tornadoes of Purvis. The Bobcats go on to face the Purvis, actually the Pedal Panthers tomorrow. And I believe your Bobcats are district champs here in Summerall. This is Zane Berry logging off. Thank you for watching. Good night.